I make a video criticizing Elon Musk, there is one common comeback, and that's that he's revolutionized space travel with SpaceX. He's made rocket flight 10 times cheaper. Even I had heard it enough that I thought there was some grade of truth to it. And so it was that one of my patrons sent me this, saying that I was being unfair to Elon Musk, and he sent me this article. And then I went into the details of the article and was shocked by what I found. I mean, with hindsight, it's kind of obvious that his claims were bullshit. I mean, the whole thing sort of falls apart, even using SpaceX's own numbers, where if they really made all of these savings by reusing their rockets, then why, according to SpaceX's own numbers, are the savings from reusing a rocket just slightly above 10%? And if you sit down and think about it for a second, it's like, well, yeah, rocket technology really hasn't changed a lot over the last 50 years. So how could he be doing it 10 times cheaper? And if you think that reusability is the killer here, well, I'm going to go into some details why it's not. <laughs> but the scammy sense was already twitching when you find out that his own numbers say that you only get a saving of about 10% by reusing the craft. And if a man claims that he's made something 10 times cheaper, when in reality it's nearer 10% cheaper, do you really have grounds to believe his claims that he's going to make it another 100 times cheaper? This is SpaceX Bastard. <laughs> Now, it's a typical thing with Elon Musk that he will frequently claim that he's made things 10 or so times better, whereas in reality, there is no way that you could do such things without instantly collapsing the markets that you're in. Seriously, are there any markets where you can make something 10 times cheaper and the market wouldn't collapse? I mean, take, for instance, batteries. Few would be impressed if I showed you a AAA battery and then, with great fanfare, said that it took me 10 years of research to make a battery with 50% more energy in it, and then revealing it to be the AA battery. Yet this is exactly what Elon Musk did on a battery day. Or Elon Musk's claims that he was digging tunnels 100 times cheaper than other people. And, and they can cost up to a billion dollars per mile. So clearly something needs to be done to revolutionize tunneling technology. Uh, we need to be able to build tunnels way faster uh, and for a hell of a lot less money. So don't, normally it, it, the tunnels cost, like I said, on, uh, up to a billion dollars. So like a, a, a discount tunnel would be sort of $200 million, but we're able to build this tunnel for about $10 million. So. Again, a preposterous claim on the surface that a man with no experience rolls up in a mature, hundred-year-old field of tunnel digging, buys an off-the-shelf tunneling machine, and boom, does things a hundred times cheaper. Yeah, turns out he wasn't digging his tunnels a hundred times cheaper. He was comparing his tunnel digging costs to the costs of a fully functional metro system. If you actually took the fair comparison, yeah, it turns out Elon Musk's costs for digging a tunnel were almost exactly the same as everyone else's. Then he claimed that his Las Vegas loop system was going to run at 150 miles per hour in these amazing pods. In reality, its max rated speed is less than half of that. It's already a month late in opening, and I'll put money that when it does open, it will dispel the idea that chauffeur-driven cars driving in tiny tunnels is a really clever idea by a genius billionaire. It will be expensive to run, it won't move many people, and will be a death trap compared to um, other contemporary forms of transport. But watch this space, it should be opening any time now. I'm a common, or maybe I'm a god, zooming around the planet in my hyperlooping then there was the Hyperloop, which was, first of all, a hundred-year-old idea, which Elon Musk simply plagiarized. But even if you took him at his word that this was really, really easy to do, 
And uh, honestly, I think it's a lot easier than, than people think. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> Turns out, a couple of years later, Elon Musk wasn't even capable of doing something that pff, really wasn't that difficult. Just a year or so after the uh, white paper was published, Elon Musk was asked whether he favored electromagnetic levitation or aerodynamic levitation. And his answer was wheels. Which one do you prefer? Still the air bearings or do you go with magnet? Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good question. So, you know, the... <clears throat> a couple of minutes later. Um, so, I'd probably advocate um, wheels and... Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Why, that's an odd thing for a genius to say when his only contribution to the uh, Hyperloop was, we're going to run it on air skis and compressors. Pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear, it's not that hard. <laughs> In other words, he plagiarized a hundred-year-old idea, added something completely impractical to it, then changed the idea back to the original hundred-year-old idea that has never been implemented because it's just too impractical to make. But the rocket, with these, he's the real deal, right? I mean, just look at this. He's made rockets 20 times cheaper than the space shuttle, right? I mean, just look at this. The space shuttle cost a whopping $60,000 per kilo to go to low Earth orbit, whereas SpaceX currently are advertising doing it for less than $3,000. That's about 20 times cheaper. How could you possibly claim that this man has not revolutionized launch costs? Okay, let's take this one head on. It's all about the metrics of comparison. I mean, obviously, if you're going to compare your costs of just digging a tunnel to someone else's costs of completing a metro system, yeah, you're probably going to be cheaper. So the way this space shuttle figure is arrived at is you take the entire cost of the space shuttle program, which is, of course, fairly easy to do. The program's finished. It's all documented how much it cost, how much it cost to design the machine, how much the flights cost, how much the launch facilities cost, and so forth. And you divide that through by the amount that it delivered to orbit, and boom, you have a price per kilogram to low Earth orbit. And then they're going to compare that to what Elon Musk currently quotes his price to orbit is. Well, okay, let's do maybe a fairer comparison. Sure, the program average was about $1.5 billion dollars per shuttle launch, but you're comparing that to essentially the routine costs of launching a Falcon 9. Well, okay, let's do the fair comparison, which is the sort of routine launch costs. Well, by the end of its life, the routine launch of the shuttle cost about a third of what the program average was, which was about $450 million per launch. Okay, well, it doesn't make that much difference. SpaceX is no longer 20 times cheaper, but seven times cheaper. Well, not entirely. The space shuttle was a human-rated craft that could carry seven people to orbit. And you're comparing that to Elon Musk's price for just launching kilograms to orbit. But maybe let's do a, a more fair comparison to this big space shuttle number of $60,000 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. Well, maybe the fairest comparison to do would be to take a look at what NASA's contract with SpaceX was. This 2008 contract, by the way, is what saved SpaceX. Without this, even according to Elon Musk, they would have gone bust. This contract is also one of the reasons why people criticize Elon Musk of living on corporate welfare. For me, it's kind of a gray issue in that historically, NASA never really made any of their own craft. They always contracted this sort of thing out. So SpaceX is a bit of an outlier here in that they were a rocket manufacturer on the verge of bankruptcy. But again, you can take a look at the contract, how much it was for, and how much they were going to deliver to orbit. The contract was for some 12 launches, which were going to carry a minimum of 20 tons, that's 20,000 kilograms of cargo to the International Space Station. The contract price was for about $1.6 billion. 
That puts the total program costs of a kilogram to orbit using SpaceX at about $80,000, more expensive than the program costs for the shuttle. And again, I've got to stress this. The shuttle was a human-rated craft. The SpaceX launch is being contracted for here and not. But I've got some good news for SpaceX here. Their Dragon capsule carries about six tons of supplies to the International Space Station, and that's per launch. So if they do 12 launches like that, then they will over-deliver on the contract they have with NASA. That is, rather than delivering some 20 tons to the International Space Station, they're going to deliver some 70 tons of cargo to the International Space Station. Which brings their program costs down lower than the Space Shuttle. But again, you got to bear in mind, the Space Shuttle took people to the International Space Station, not just cargo. And so SpaceX is not actually delivering any great savings here. And I'm not the first to notice this either. You know, NASA guys have actually said that when they decommissioned the shuttle and contracted things out with SpaceX, their launch costs actually went up. But, you know, stepping back, like I was saying, one of the most important things here is the space shuttle was a human-rated vessel that could carry up to seven people. These SpaceX launches that they're comparing it to are not. The last generation of space shuttle carried about seven people for $450 million or so. So ignoring the 20 odd tons of cargo it could also carry, just taking it as a shuttle for getting people from the ground to the space station, it's about $65 million per seat. Now when the shuttle was decommissioned, they had to contract that out to Russia, who charged them more, about $80 million per seat to orbit. So SpaceX must be doing this much cheaper, right? Well, they are doing it cheaper, but not crazy cheaper. It's more like 10% or something. And again, you've got to be a little careful in taking SpaceX's numbers too much on faith here. Now, something else that should uh, raise the eyebrow on the uh, bullshit alarm is when you take a look at some of Elon Musk's articles from about 10 years ago, where they were claiming that SpaceX was going to propulsively land and reuse every part of their rocket. And for those who think that reusing all parts of your rocket is always a good idea that will always save you money, then just riddle me this. Why did SpaceX abandon its plans to reuse the second stage of its rockets? But even back then, Elon Musk was saying how the actual cost of the rocket fuel is almost insignificant compared to the cost of the rocket where it's about some $200,000, $0.2 million for the fuel, and $60 million for his Falcon 9 rocket. And so he was saying, well, if I can reuse the rocket a thousand times, then the price of launching the rocket basically comes down to the price of the fuel, some $200,000. Well, yes, in cloud cuckoo land. In reality, of course, you have to do maintenance on your rocket to check that it's fit to fly again. And those costs of checking that your rocket is fit to fly again are significant. But if you think about it, he's kind of right in this cloud cuckoo land calculation that if the lifetime of my rocket is two runs, then it halves the cost for a launch. And if I can run it three times, then it reduces the launch cost by a factor of three. And if I can reuse it 10 times, then it reduces the launch cost by a factor of 10 to some $6 million per launch, which SpaceX have claimed they would be able to do several times. Well, okay, let's take a look at how much SpaceX have reduced their launch costs over the period of about a decade. 2010, it was about $53 million. 2012, it had gone up some to $56 million. 2013, up a little more. 2014, up to $60 million now. And it's up to $62 million now. So basically, I'm not seeing any great reduction in the price per rocket when if they were getting real savings out of reusing the rockets, these prices should be crashing like crazy. But hey, let's take a look at this in more detail. If the first thing that you need to know about rockets is they are basically constant thrust machines. And the weight composition of rockets is also fairly consistent in that at takeoff, they're about 90% by weight fuel, 
10% is the actual weight of the rocket, which is the engines, the fuel tanks, that sort of thing. And about 1% is what's going to orbit. So when you first light them up, they barely provide enough thrust to lift themselves off the ground because they're so big and heavy and full of fuel. So as you progressively burn off the fuel, the thrust of course stays the same, the rocket gets lighter. The bottom line is you get a lot more thrust out of the last kilos of fuel that you burn than you do out of the first. Now this is a problem when it comes to reusable rockets because you don't get to burn that last bit of fuel. You've got to save it for the propulsive landing of the rocket. And ballpark figures, it roughly halves the amount that you can take to low Earth orbit if you want to reuse the rocket. And if we take a look at SpaceX's numbers for the Falcon 9, where they are only reusing the booster, you'll see what I mean. That in the reusable form, it only puts about 70% of the mass to orbit as it does in the expendable form. Now, I'm just going to do an illustrative calculation here, so the numbers aren't actually exact or that critical. Okay, so here I've got a spreadsheet set up to show you the rough economics of reusability. So here we've got the number of rockets that we're going to be launching. Uh, this is our costs. So in a perfect reusable case, the cost of the first rocket is one rocket cost, and then the cost of subsequent rockets is zero. And I'm going to make the ballpark assumption they only take about half of the mass to orbit. It's just a setup thing on the sheet. So the total rocket cost in the perfect reusable case is the cost of the first rocket, and there is zero extra cost for subsequent launches. And the payload to low Earth orbit, well, on the first launch, it's half a payload. In the second case, it's half a payload, and so forth. So you launch more and more total payloads to orbit for no extra cost. This is the critical one. This is your cost to low Earth orbit in terms of payloads per rocket. And in this perfect reusable case, you get a graph that looks like this. That your if you've got a reusable rocket and you only use it once, it's twice as expensive. Your break-even point uh, is this line here. Right? This is the cost of expendable rockets when you launch one payload to orbit per rocket. And so you need to launch at least three times before you get into the break-even point. But what happens if it actually costs you something to refurbish the rockets? So let's start off with it costs us 50% of the cost of a new rocket to refurbish it. It's just an, a number, just to give us some feel of how these are all going to pan out. Good. Now you can see that our costs per rocket aren't static anymore, but they actually increase. Our payloads increase just as they did before. And this is the critical bet is now our number of payloads to orbit per rocket never actually get to the break even point. Even though we're reusing the rockets every time and it only costs us 50% of the cost of a new rocket to refurbish it, we never actually get to the break even point. And this is not far off where the space shuttle was, that it would have actually been cheaper to use disposable craft than to reuse the space shuttle. So how low does this reusable number have to get before you hit a break even point? Well, if we reduce it to say 40%, then we hit the break even point at about six relaunches. If we take this down to 30%, then we hit it after uh, just before four launches. And if we go down to 10%, then we hit the break-even point at about three launches. Now, remember what I was saying earlier that, okay, uh, with the SpaceX numbers, it's not that you only take about 50% to low Earth orbit, it's nearer 70%. But you can then add in the fact that the second stage is never reused. You, the minimum amount of cost for a relaunch is 20%, right? This is baked in that you have a 20% cost on relaunch because they don't reuse the second stage so after that your numbers can only go up from point two you know this means that your break-even point is baked in right the absolute best that you can do is uh, a break-even point at about three launches well where are spacex's numbers are on this after all this outrageous success that they've had well spacex president glenn shotwell claimed that the refurbishment costs 
on a Falcon 9 was substantially less than half, which you can read how you want, but I read that as optimistically 40% because she's a uh, corporate type into talking up the company, as we'll see later. And if she could have said less than a third, she would have done. But 40% is nothing impressive to write home about in reusing these boosters, because that is just about the break-even point for these rockets. And this rather gels with the fact that SpaceX's launch costs for the Falcon 9 really haven't decreased any over the last decade with reusability. And if you take a look at some of their competitors, they say that the break-even point is probably nearer 10 reuses and that no one's gotten close to that, while SpaceX is claiming two to three. The bottom line is there really hasn't been any fall in the launch costs of the Falcon 9 over the last decade. So where are all these savings? I'm also intrinsically skeptical about Glenn Shotwell. That's the woman who is making these utterly preposterous claims with a straight face. So here's how much these tickets will cost and how Starship will make long distance aviation obsolete. I mean, Gwen, come on, this, this, this is awesome, but it's crazy, right? Like, this is never going to actually happen. Oh, no, it's definitely going to happen. It's... This is definitely going to happen. Uh, how? Like, what? Oh. I mean... So you really believe this is going to be deployed at some point in our amazing future? When? When do you... Within a decade, for sure. Yep, that's the president and chief engineering officer of SpaceX. How did you end up an engineer and president of SpaceX? Telling us that we're going to be flying these rockets like planes within 10 years. And that was put up about eh, three years ago now. Right? And yet a long haul aircraft can only make one of those flights a day. So even if my rocket was slightly more expensive and the fuel is a little bit more expensive, I can run 10x at least what they're running in a day and really make the revenue that I need to out of that system. Yeah, this is just sheer delusional rambling on every level. I mean, first of all, she thinks that there's 10 times the market for international travel that there currently is. That's just not true. And even if it were true, the fuel costs for the rocket will be about 10 times what they were for the plane. And then, of course, the planes are essentially completely reliable, whilst the rockets have about a 1% failure rate, so she needs to make her rockets about a, a million times more reliable. And then, of course, she assumes that the reuse cost of the rocket is zero, and the turnaround time is zero. Realistically, these rockets take hours to fuel, and the refurbishment cost of the rockets is more realistically in the weeks to months time frame, and the refurbishment costs are currently comparable to the costs of using expendable rockets. Basically, the fact that there's been no significant decrease in the cost of the Falcon 9 with reusability over the last decade shows that the Falcon 9 is in the same ballpark as the Space Shuttle in that whilst it's true it's a reusable space vehicle, there are no significant cost savings by doing it. That is, SpaceX really haven't provided any significant saving in getting to orbit over other launch vehicles. In fact, there are people, um, other orbital launch services, who have accused SpaceX of price dumping. Now, I'm sure these are their market rivals, so you've got you to factor that in to how you appraise this. The basic accusation is that SpaceX overcharged the US government by a factor of three to four times what the market rate is. And there is a fairly reasonable argument for this. Then they use that money that they've been given by the US government to price other people out of the market. And it's pretty difficult to not feel sympathetic to this argument when SpaceX claims that their rocket launches are about 60 million apiece, whilst they're charging the military $316 million for a launch. But don't worry, Glenn Shotwell, you remember her, she's got a great explanation as to why the price went up by a factor of six. So let's get some little progress bars on here. This is what SpaceX is charging the US government for a launch, 316 million. This is what they claim the actual cost of the launch is, about $60 million. So they have to account for quarter of a billion dollars extra costs here. 
$250 million. Take it away, Glenn. Shotwell insisted that the company's launch prices were not going up. SpaceX is, however, charging the government for the cost of an extended payload fairing. <laughs> Seriously? A an extended payload fairing? Uh, $250 million. Okay, let's see how much a regular payload fairing costs. Well, according to Elon Musk, a regular payload fairing costs about $6 million new. And that, of course, is actually counted as part of the rocket and therefore the launch costs. So, I don't know, what's a, what's a brand spanking new extended payload fairing going to cost? Million dollars? 20 million? Doesn't really matter. You've still got over 200 million extra dollars to account for. Why on earth would you even bother with listing something as small as an extended payload fairing, let alone listing it first? So what do we got? The cost of the extended payload fairing, upgrades to the company's West Coast launch pad, the company's West Coast launch pad, okay, um, and the vertical integration facility required for the NRO missions, which I assume basically means they want a crane to load stuff onto the rocket. Well, yeah, if you're going to charge the government for building your entire facilities for you, then, yeah, your launch costs are going to come down, which is kind of exactly what the accusation of uh, price dumping is. Anyway, Elon Musk's response to the accusation of price dumping was that the actual cause is the Falcon 9s are 80% reusable while Russian rockets are expendable. Well, that doesn't actually answer anything. The space shuttle was 100% reusable and still wasn't that cost effective as a launch vehicle. And again, it bears restating there has been no significant reduction in SpaceX's launch costs due to reusability. It's even quite difficult to work out if SpaceX is commercially successful or not as a company, or whether they're just being supported by corporate welfare, or if there's actually a grey line between these two. But the reality is, the claims that Elon Musk has revolutionised the launch industry simply don't survive contact with reality any more than his claims that he revolutionized battery technology or he revolutionized tunnel digging or for that matter that he invented a brand new form of transport it's like a tube with an air hockey table it's really i swear it's not that hard <laughs> i'd probably advocate um wheels I'm a common, or maybe I'm a god. Zooming around the planet in my hyperloopin' pun Yeah, it's just been a bugbear of mine when someone inflates the claims of what they've done by an order or so of magnitude, like when the billionaire Elizabeth Holmes did this, or the billionaire who made the free electric. Yeah, why should I treat Elon Musk any differently? And that's why I made SpaceX Busted. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sporting by dropping a thumbs up on it. And if you don't want to miss out on more great videos like this, you can subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. And as ever, if you really like the content of this channel and want to support it directly, yeah, I can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.